Can you guys hear me? All right. Let's do this. Let's get our ninja on. How cute is he, right? It actually occurs to me I have a graphic of him with an engagement ring, and that would have been a really good. No, it wouldn't. That's creepy. Don't, don't get engaged to your subscribers. OK, so um, I'm Tammy, for anybody who doesn't know me. I suffer from crippling stage fright. <laughs> They've moved me from a comfortable spot in the bronze area to fill Kate Picton's shoes. So bear with me, I guess. <laughs> We're going to talk about building. <laughs> Thank you. We're gonna, they did fill up actually, so there is that. We're gonna talk about building super fans, how to keep your subscribers engaged forever, so no pressure, right? Um, if you are at home, you can go to uh, newsletterninja.net slash 20 books 2022. Those are all numerals, the 20 ones. 20 books 2022 to grab this slide deck if you wanna follow along at home, because I know you, can't, you don't see the slides. Um, there are also no great shakes, there's nothing in, terribly exciting happening on them, but it's nice to have them. So that is where you can find them. The rest of you can also find them if you want to. Um, keeping your subscribers engaged. This is simple. It's really, really simple. Simple does not equal easy. So I don't want you to feel like when I say, oh, just X, or you can just Y, that I don't understand that for some people that is not as easy as I make it sound. Um, and because we are all different and have different strengths, uh, both with the lower case and the upper case, <laughs> hashtag Becca, I understand that not all of you will automatically be good at some of what I'm gonna talk about. So don't, you know, no pressure. Don't stress yourself out. We're gonna talk a little bit about mindset first, which is, woo, but I've only got two of these, so it's gonna be okay. Mindset hack number one that I need you to, <laughs> they can see the slides, sorry people at home. Mindset hack number one is that you are probably more interesting than you think, okay? Because when people come up to me at these sorts of events, one of the things that they say very frequently, some of you here today have said it to me at this event, is nobody wants to hear about me. I'm not interesting. I stay at home and write books, or I'm just a mom, or I, any number of things. I'm not interesting. Why would anyone want to hear about me? Chances are good you're more interesting than you think. Now, I don't know your life, so I put a little asterisk and said probably. You could be super, super dull, but I bet you're not. And here's the one thing I want you to keep in mind more than anything is that to the people who have signed up for your newsletter, you wrote a whole book, or perhaps you reeled them in with a shorter thing for a reader magnet and they haven't quite gotten to the book yet, but you wrote a whole story that they liked enough to stick around and see what you had to say. So you already have a thumbs up in the, I don't know, the thumbs up column. They already find you interesting enough to have said, let's see what's going on with this person because there's an unsubscribe link at the bottom of every email, man. They could have bailed at any time. Anybody who is on your list right now has implicitly said, I'm interested enough to stick around for the next email. Okay, so you are probably more interesting than you think you are. Mindset hack number two, you are not bothering people, probably. Um, I mean, you might be, I don't know your life, maybe don't email quite so much, but you are probably not bothering people. I very rarely have anyone come to me at one of these events and say, I email at this interval X number of days and, and had me go, that's too many. Normally it's, I email a couple times a year or once a month, but I don't have anything to say. You're fine. You're not bothering people. As I said before, there's an unsubscribe link at the bottom of every email. So anybody who is still there has implicitly said, I'm still here and would like to hear from you. Um, I do not have a statistic in my back pocket for you because I'm terrible at that, but more than one study by people like me who like to study this kind of thing and do surveys 
has found that people who are subscribed to various mailing lists for brands, for personalities, for celebrities, for authors, has said that they would be happy to hear from those people more often than they do. I hear from Nora Roberts twice a year. I wish she'd step it up a little. I would definitely be happy to hear from her more often. This may not be the case with your people. You may have found the perfect balance, but you are not bothering them because if you were bothering them, they would leave. It's really that simple. Please, please internalize those two things. They showed up because they are interested in you. So by default, you are interesting. Even if you don't find yourself interesting. I find myself tedious in the extreme. But even if you don't find yourself interesting, the people on your list absolutely do. And you are not bothering them or they would show themselves out. Are we agreed on this? There's a lot of nodding heads. That makes me super happy. Okay, so we're gonna talk about content. I have traditionally not talked about content a lot because in my dismissive way, people have come to me and said, I don't know what's put in my emails. And I say, of course you do. You don't, clearly, because you keep telling me that. And so maybe I'll listen. Um, so contact hack number one is going to be the foundation of this whole situation is you. That's what they came for, right? Your books or you, which is, you know, tightly aligned enough that we can just shorthand it to you. What I want you to do as you introduce those subscribers onto your list, perhaps in a welcome sequence, which you should have, or maybe a welcome email, if you don't have enough catalog to really justify a sequence. What I want you to do is let those people get to know you in a foundational way. I'm not great at catchy acronyms, <laughs> so I'm calling this three W's and an H. Great. I want you to tell people as they're coming in and somewhat early in the process of getting to know you, so the welcome sequence is a good place for that. Four things. Who you are, what you write, why you write it, and how you write it differently from everybody else. And you all just went, my stuff is not different and it's not special and it's just like everybody else's. And it's not. I'm here to tell you that as well. Um, nobody else can write the exact books that you write, so that's awesome. Um, and when you tell people what it is about your books that makes them different, when you give them something to kind of hang their hat on in terms of uh, just explaining your approach to things or the slightly different detail or the way your heroine is older or chubbier, a lot of chubby heroine, or just different from other heroines, or how your hero behaves in this way, or how your villain is like this, or how your world building is like that, or the reason you write is because you wanted to see this. When you're telling people these stories about you and what you write and why you write it, and you're telling them how it's different, you are putting yourself in a place in their heads where they come to understand that if they get off your list, if they stop reading your books, they won't be able to get that thing anymore that you give them the thing that, the, the itch that you are scratching. That's also gross, but <laughs> it is what it is. So who you are, what you write, why you write it, and how you write it different than everybody else. Please note that I said different. I didn't say better, although you might write it better than other people. Uh, chances are you write it better than at least someone. Um, but we obviously don't talk to subscribers in that way because it's kind of ugly, <laughs> right? So we're not gonna be like, I'm the best romance author and all those other chumps. <laughs> but how you do it differently, the fact that your romances are for X kind of person or your urban fantasy is for this kind of person or you know, however that works, whatever is unique about you. If you don't know what that is, I mean, there's a lot of you, neither do I, but you should think about it. This is the sort of thing that maybe you sit down and you go through your catalog with a sheet of paper and do some brainstorming and figure out, I'm writing this, there's a reason I'm writing it. I wrote a book that did not exist, so what's different about this one? And you do have permission to present yourself as the author who writes X genre in this way, even if you know there's a few people that are kind of close to you. It's fine. <laughs> you don't have to be the specialist of special snowflakes, but give them a way to identify you and understand in plain language what it is they're getting from you. A side benefit of this is that it also makes you recommendable, which is nice. So if you say, I write steamy romance for the hot flashes set, are they 
yeah, why not? Um, then someone will repeat that to their friend when they hand their books over, you know? This is really spicy, but it's not about people that are 20. And their friend who also gets hot flashes will be super excited about that. If you have something special that you can tell them about yourself, it becomes the language that they will use about you. And maybe you get yourself another fan or subscriber, or both. But you are the foundation of this thing. This list is about you, which makes you acutely uncomfortable because you don't think you're interesting and you think you are bothering people. But this list is about you. So you're gonna be the first thing that you wanna to talk to people about. That's your main content. Put those four sort of stories in your back pocket and be ready to pull those out for people. Content hack number two is way easier and super, super way more fun. Greetings, literally I mean the greeting on your email. So when somebody opens your email, they can look at it and it can just like start talking. And I do that a lot of times, sometimes, but mostly I greet my folks and I say to them, either it's personalized, which I do sometimes with their first name, or the default if I don't have a first name or what I will say if I'm not personalizing is ninjas, hey ninjas or hello ninjas, or whatever. I call them that. This is creating kind of a shared identity for them, right? So if you have a reader group of romance readers and they tend to call themselves something or to call you something or to refer specifically to one of your series or one of your books, if you write fantasy and the world that you write in lends itself to that sort of thing, what I want you to do is find some kind of nickname, some kind of little mascot name that you can call your people and address them in this way when you talk to them. Also, when you talk to them on you know, the social media, absolutely do that too. But when you're doing your greetings, go ahead and greet them directly. You're talking to one person. This is an email to a friend. This is an email to someone that wants to hear from you. Go ahead and greet them by name or nickname and give them that little kind of sense of shared identity. Super fun. Okay, fun is maybe overstating it a little bit. Content hack number three, story is the backbone of your emails. And this is why I have poo-pooed you over the years when you came to me and said, I don't know what to put in my emails because you know how to tell stories. <laughs> it's like the one thing I know about everybody sitting in this room is that you know how to tell a story. Um, the problem is that what you're doing with your fiction, it was not a problem, but the hiccup is what you're doing with your fiction and what you need to do over here in your email is a little bit different and a lot of you are having trouble making the jump. Some of you are awesome at it, in which case if you wanted to like go see Damon or something, I totally get it. But most of you are having some trouble with that, with making that transition. And what I want you to remember is that a story is a story is a story. It has a beginning, it has a middle, it has an end, generally has a point, <laughs> there's a reason you told the story. You can relate it to whatever else is happening in your email. It can segue into a call to action. It can just segue into a piece of information. It can just be the story. Sometimes you can just send them a story. I got this story about Guillermo del Toro and James Cameron back pocketed and I'm really excited to go and it's not gonna segue to anything because it doesn't relate to anything, but it's a really cool story and I wanna tell people. So you are allowed to do that as well. Here's a cool story. Go ahead and knock yourself out. What I want you to do is to tell them cool things that you have read somewhere, a fun rabbit hole you fell down on the internet, a piece of research that led you to learn about something you didn't know before. I recently sent an email to my nonfiction list about a 18th century chess automaton, it was a fake of course, that could, it could play chess, it was called the Mechanical Turk. It was a little guy hiding inside the machine, spoiler. But that was a super fun story. Um, and I would have just told it as a story, but it also worked really well to segue into imposter syndrome, so not that I would know anything about that. So you can tell them a story, and you can relate it to something, not relate it to something, whatever. Cool rabbit hole, piece of research, something you watched on TV, something you just found as you were you know, reading something else. Some, just, you'll have a story about 20 books when you get home and you're thinking, they probably don't wanna hear about my conference. Yeah, they do, they do, I promise they do. Uh, they don't wanna hear like super boring details about your conference, but you got to meet a bunch of authors and you saw some cool presentations and hopefully you went out and did something fun in Vegas, right? Um, 
a couple of years ago, many people got to hear about, uh, we went to the Mob Museum. That was fun. Go to the Mob Museum. It's a lot of fun. Um, so that's what I want you to do. I want you to try as best you can. Some emails are just informational or updates. We'll actually talk about updates in a minute. Um, but I want you as best you can to inject story into everything, wherever you can. Start with a story, then move them into something else if you need to. Maybe not every time, but most of the time, because that is what hooks people, that a story is what makes somebody stay and read, and then when there's two more paragraphs of your stuff after, they'll stick for that. Content hack number four, the personal. I want you to be relating to people. So the people who are subscribers, the people who are your audience, they are like you in some way, even if it's just that you like the same sort of books. Um, but individual people or segments of your list will be like you in other ways. So if you talk about the things that are personal to you, I don't mean like your social security number or like you get to decide what the level of personal is that you're comfortable with. I have readers who, I'm, I'm sorry, I have uh, authors who never show their faces, authors who don't talk about their family, authors who never say where they live. I have authors who send baby pictures like from the hospital. There's all, like, it's, it runs the gamut, and you get to decide that. But when you talk to people about something personal, whether it is that you, in my case, I love Doctor Who. Anybody who's on my newsletter knows this already. Believe me, they know. Um, I love uh, uh, 80s and 90s Nintendo and Super Nintendo RPGs. Huge fan. I love Taylor Swift. Don't know what to tell you. Um, so, see, someone else loves the RPGs, and who could blame them? Or maybe Taylor Swift, I don't know. Um, those are things that my people know about me. And definitely everybody on my list does not love Doctor Who, but when I send a Doctor Who meme, I get a couple dozen replies back from people who want to talk about who was their favorite doctor or what have you. So talk to people about something that is personal to you, something that they can relate to. You adopted a squirrel, you saw a cool dog, I guess I'm really into animals right now, just something that will make people relate to you. And on the topic of dogs, if you have any pets, send pictures. Um, people love them. They will, even if you don't ask them to, reply with pictures of their own pets. Um, and it's a kind of cool back and forth. So pets is, a, is really low-hanging fruit for what to send to your people. Send them pets. But send them things about yourself that they can then relate to, and that cements that bond, right? That's the author who writes the books that fit X description. She's kind of the only one I know who does that, and also, she totally loves Doctor Who. I'm in. Um, that's all I have to say about that. Content hack number five. This is where you're gonna get into the stuff that's related to your author career, because you're not running a charity here. Like, this is, you know, we eventually wanna sell some books, right? Updates, the hype. So. What I don't want you to do, <laughs> despite the fact that I did it to my list this morning, is just drop stuff, I almost said a swear word, drop stuff on them like Beyonce. Don't do that. I want you to prep them for things. I want you to, in the lead up to, say, a release or an audiobook coming out that's a release but a different kind of release, or you're going to make an appearance somewhere at a signing, or, you know, whatever, an event that you're going to want to talk to people about that's related to your career or your books, Please do some hyping up ahead of time, rather than just dropping a book on them and going, they don't seem very enthusiastic. Of course they don't. You didn't tell them why to be enthusiastic. And I don't know if you know this, but they have a lot of things vying for their attention. So I, I don't know your timeline. I don't know how fast you write, but let's say you publish every three months. So maybe three or four weeks after the last book comes out, you're gonna send them a little teaser about the book that's coming. Hey, you, everyone, you had such a great reaction to the last book. I'm so pleased by all the reviews. Thank you so much for all of the you know, nice things you said about it. And I'm so happy you love X, Y, or Z about it. The next book has this, this, and this. I'm pretty sure you're gonna love that too. If you're a cover reveal type of person, somewhere along that continuum, now that you've started that line of dominoes, somewhere along that continuum, do a cover reveal. That's appropriate for some genres, not for others. But go ahead and do that cover reveal and don't be afraid to hype it up. Isn't this gorgeous? Hit reply and tell me what you think about it. Hit reply and let me know if you like the colors. Um, here's the two together. If you're writing a series, show them that. Like, don't they look great? Be excited. Be excited. 
they're not going to be excited if you're not. Like, you can't just be, like, ashamed that you sell books and show up and be like, I'm sorry, I wrote a book. <laughs> like, right? Be excited. I'm so excited for you to meet these characters or enter this world or learn about this spaceship. I'm very bad at science fiction. <laughs> I don't know what you guys are doing. Um, I could do romance all day up here, but I don't know anything about science fiction. Um, but hype it up a little. I want to see some hype. This is one of the reasons, as an aside, that I generally recommend people, when uh, subscribers are going through your welcome sequence, maybe just exclude them from your regular campaign emails. If you've got like a three-week welcome sequence, the worst thing that can happen is they're getting welcome emails and then they're also getting this nonsense from you every like four days or whatever leading up to launch and nobody wants the hype when they just met you. Like it's too much. So do go ahead and shield your people from that, your new people, but your OG who've been sticking around, hype it up. Tell them why they're supposed to love it, man. They don't know if you don't tell them. Then we got content hack number six, release the payoff. So when it is time for the book to drop in a perfect world, and it really does work this way a lot of the time, you show up with a two sentence email. Today's the day, the book is here, and a link. And off they go because you've been talking about it for three months or three days. I don't know how fast you publish. You've been talking about it since the last book. You've been getting them excited. You did a cover reveal. You gave them some snippets of dialogue. You uh, showed them the chapter list. You made me a big excerpt. I don't know what you did, but you got them super hyped up for it. So all you have to do is show up and say it's here. You don't have to do the hype that day. You don't have to show them the product description because you already did. Throw the cover in because people love a cover but you don't have to do like a whole song and dance for them. The book is here, here's the link, go get it. I can't wait to hear what you think. And that's it. Then as release week or whatever, however long you like to be excited about release, moves along, you send them some other emails because guess what? A lot of people don't buy from the first one. I would criticize, but I am also a last chance email kind of person. <laughs> I don't know if anybody else, I'm very much a last chance email kind of person. But you can do the thing where you remind them over the course of the week to go get the book um, without saying, did you go get the book? Email them a couple days after release and say, look at this amazing review I got. I'm so excited that people are loving this book. Email them two days after that and say, this book got to number 80,000 in the store. They don't know what's good. It's fine. Don't even worry about it. Maybe you got you know, something good in a category. It was 700 in underwater basket weaving. I don't know, but like tell them, this is awesome. Look at how great this is. Send them another review partway through maybe, or just tell them what you're excited about and talk about the book and talk about the launch and the release and how things are going instead of just saying, did you get it yet? Did you get it yet? Don't forget, don't forget. The one exception to don't forget is if you release your list with a lower price, which some people do, and that's like that works for them and some people don't and that works for them and I don't have an opinion that's your business um, but if you do release you obviously want to send them a prices going up email and you'd be very surprised by the number of people who are motivated by that oh sh oh crap almost said a swear word again um, and off they go to purchase it so if you're gonna do that if you're if you're doing like price raises you want to let them know but that is your, that's your payoff. That's your payoff for talking to them like human beings, for sending them fun stories, for telling them about the squirrel you adopted, for talking about Doctor Who incessantly, it me, um, is that when the time comes for you to actually drop this thing on them, they're happy to have it. And that is a way different place to be than I didn't email them since the last book because I'm afraid they don't want to hear from me. So um, I guess I better tell them I have a book out. And then surprise, not a lot of click through, not a lot of enthusiasm. And I mean, that's on you guys. Come on, get it together. Content hack number seven, recommendations. These are perhaps not the backbone, but also very foundational to your subscriber list, to your mailing list. This is. It says twinning. This is one of the main ways you're going to relate with readers is book recommendations. And I don't necessarily mean like book swaps, like doing a group promo, like story origins, book funnel, newsletter swaps, any of that. Those are recommendations, certainly, and you should and can do them because they can be very good for you. Um, and sometimes there's overlap with what I'm talking about, which is a sincere recommendation of a book you really loved. 
So if you send people a sincere recommendation about a book that you enjoyed and you can tell them why they enjoyed it and you send them off with a link to go check it out, a lot of people will check it out, particularly if, like you did with yourself, you're able to give them language about why you loved it, right? So um, I sent an email quite a long time ago when I had helped a previously trad author get some backlist into print, and I sent an email. The subject line was, this is a book I waited 10 years for. Because I had it in print back in like the mid-2000s. I had long since gotten rid of all my print books. I wanted to read one of the books in this series again. And I hounded her, <laughs> God bless her, until she let me help her. I was like, this is literally my day job. And she let me get them into print for her. So the first thing I did was send it to my list and say, this is the book I've waited 10 years for. Here's the story of why I wanted it. Here's the story of how I got it. Here's what I love about it. Here's a link. And the sell through on that was phenomenal. It was a very sincere recommendation. And then the replies from people who said, I'm so glad you sent that to me. Because if you ask them, if you do pick it up, hit reply and let me know what you thought, they absolutely will. Because they can tell that you genuinely care. You liked the book, you had things to say about it, and you want to know what they thought. You can't, I mean, you can't beat it. Um, so sincere recommendations will get you through when you literally have nothing else to write about. <laughs> Just when you're like, I told them about the squirrel, and I don't have a book, and I, I haven't done anything interesting because, I don't know, we've been inside for two years. And you can just, you know what, I like books, I'll tell them about a book. Do it, hit them with a book recommendation. Hit them with a book recommendation four, five, six times a year. They're never going to complain, they like books. Surprise. <laughs> this is the fun part. Content hack number eight is the rest. It's literally everything. And this is the part where it can get really dicey for people. There is nothing you can't talk about in your newsletter provided you're comfortable with it and you're okay with the fact that that then will shape the newsletter you have. So if you talk to your newsletter about super personal things or difficult stuff that's happening in your life, you might have a different newsletter than if you very intentionally send like cheerful stories you see in the news and try to always present this very other different kind of, that was a lot of words, different sort of personality if you will. Some people do that. They choose to always turn this kind of face. Some people are more open. Some people are probably just always happy, which is good for them. That's awesome. Um, I don't know what that's like. You get to decide which parts you know, are okay and which parts are not, which parts are fair game to talk on the list and which parts are not fair game, and that's totally fine. But absolutely anything that you're comfortable with, you can share with your list. Some of my spicy romance authors share some stuff. Here's a link to a toy I love. Here's a, like, they don't even care. Um, some people are a little more circumspect, and that's fine too. Um, but as long as you are comfortable, there's literally nothing you can't share with your list. So go ahead and do that. You don't always know what the reaction will be. Um, so far, in the last year and a half or so, the highest unsubscribe rate I ever had was one where I emailed my list about my friend that had passed away. She was an author. But it was a very nice email. It was not like a, it was like, she was awesome. Here's a funny joke she told me once. Here's a list of cool things she liked. And you should pick up this book because she's got, you know, young kids at home and it will help to, you know, take care of them. Ton of unsubscribes. I was like, wow. It wasn't even like a downer. I mean, it's a downer, obviously, but I was, thought it was pretty nice. So you don't know what will happen. You could share something and go, oh, I get a bunch of low empathy people that left my list. Okay, that's fine. But you get to do whatever you want with it. I think probably after what should I put in my emails, the question I get more often than any other question from someone who comes up at me an event, at an event is, can I do X with my list? And I always say yes. You do whatever you want with your list, it's your list. Whatever you choose to do, that's the list you're gonna have. So if you send an email twice a year when you have a book out, you're gonna have a bunch of people who only open if you send to them, which is when you have a book out, and they actually aren't interested in you. That's the list you built. So you're gonna probably wanna try to fix that now that you've heard this brilliant talk. You should definitely do that. Um, if you have a list where you talk about a bunch of personal stuff and you're super engaging and you laugh a lot and you 
you know, get people going and they're replying to you, that's the list you have, very lively list. If you have kind of just a very businessy sort of a list, you're keeping them updated because Tammy told you not to just email when you have a release. That's fine, but you're not like, yeah, yeah. that's fine too. You'll just have a bunch of people who are like, thanks for letting me know. They'll reply to you. Your questions to them might be less chatty and personal and more like, which of these covers do you like? Or what would you like to see me work on next? That's totally fine as well. You get to decide what your list is, and then once you've set those parameters for yourself, everything's game. So provided that I was right in the first mindset slide about how you're probably not, you're probably more interesting than you think, um, you got a lot of fodder. You are however many years old, you have or haven't had children, you are or are not married, you have or have not moved, you live in the city or you live in the country, you like this kind of book or that kind of book, you watch this kind of television or that kind of television, you like sports, you don't like sports, you're outdoorsy, you're indoorsy, I'm indoorsy. Um, just whatever. Every single thing is fair game, okay? So, now that you can put everything in your newsletter, <laughs> where are you going to put it? Um, and my answer to that, which is not on a, on a hack slide, is um, just start collecting them anywhere. I call it, for me, I keep all of mine in uh, Trello is the software that I use for that. Um, but you can do it in Asana, Notion, Google Docs, Google Sheets, Notes, Ever, Evernote, is that what it's called? Like, whatever. I almost said Evermore. See, Taylor Swift fan. You can put it in Evernote, whatever you want to do. But as things occur to you, as something happens and you think, oh, that'd be funny to tell my newsletter, do not think you're going to remember it, OK? go ahead and put it in your story bank. As you watch something cool on TV and think, you know, that is something I wanted to do in my books and I want to talk to them about that trope, that technique, that whatever, throw it in the story bank. If you see a cool piece of like copy, like copywriting, if you see a word you want to use or a phrase you want to use, I recently put, um, that's a lot to say grace over in my, I also have a copy bank because I am very extra. Um, put that away, Ta just tuck, so, tuck a little cute piece of copy away somewhere so that when it's time to sit down with your emails, you can just kind of start pulling things in. It's just a little like little modular home and you just assemble it. That's way better than just starting with a blank page, right? So that's what I would do with those stories or those bits or if you see a funny GIF or a cool meme or whatever, just start stashing things. I um, actually probably have to move out of Trello because it's got so many GIFs that it's really slow. <laughs> so if you're a GIF person, maybe don't go there. Um, but yeah, stash all that stuff somewhere and then just, it's kind of like a little assembly line, which is super fun, right? Again, fun might be overstating things. So I'm gonna take just one minute and tell you that if all of this is like, that sounds awesome, Tammy, but I am not going to do it. <laughs> I don't know what to talk about. I don't know what things to put in the email. I don't know how to make a good subject line. I don't know even how you work a story into an email without just sounding like a weirdo who's sending out stories. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I need more. This isn't enough. I got you, fam. I'm so nervous. <laughs> I just started this this morning. For those of you at home who can't see it, check out the slides. This is my membership. Don't run away. When people say that, you're like, I'm not paying you $47 a month for whatever you're about to say. And you're right, you're not. Um, this is emails on autopilot is what I'm calling it. And inside emails on autopilot, there are templates, there are uh, outlines, there are videos that walk you through example emails for each of the templates. There are prompts, there are segues, there are videos on story banking, all this stuff that I just talked about, if you can't do it, and I'll tell you honestly, I think you can, so this is not an infomercial, I think you can, but if you can't, there's a, an email address, and not an email address, it's newsletterninja.net slash EOA 20 books, EOA, emails on autopilot. It's also in the PDF, which is on the page on my website, which Maybe I just didn't put it up there. Oh, good job, Tam. That's, oh, it was at the beginning, that's why. Let's scoot back real quick. Look, it's like, it's like remembering everything. Kind of like an episode of Doctor Who. Newsletterninja.net slash 20 books 2022. The link to download this slide deck is there. The link to emails on autopilot is there. If you think you need a little help, there is a special discount for you guys because I love you and because you came here and listened to me. 
Um, but let the last thing I say before we take a question be, I really do think you can do it. So I mean that sincerely. Set yourself up a notepad, write yourself a little outline of how emails work. You know, it goes in an email, subject line, greeting, story, and then just assemble things. I, I really think you can. And I want you to keep those two mindset slides in mind all the time. You are probably more interesting than you think you are, and you are probably not bothering people. Okay? That's it. Yay. There's a microphone if anybody wants to come up and ask any questions. Is it on? Okay. Mm -hmm. Hi. Um, I had a goal this past year to increase my newsletter subscribers by about 1,000. I was starting at about 2,000. Very excited. Over 12 months to achieve that goal. I did, but I lost just as many through unsubscribes. Ugh. How do I gain them faster than I lose them? <laughs> That's a really good question. Um, that is a really good question. So let me ask you this. Where are they unsubscribing? Right in the beginning or after a while? Um, from what I've noticed, it seems like they're unsubscribing after a while. Um, like, I think it's about four to six months. This is how. Be interesting. Because I know you are. <laughs> I mean, that really is all that it is. Okay. Go back and look at your emails. Truly, like, look at them with an objective eye. Pull the emails for, you know, your last ten emails and look at them. Are they super clicky? Do they have something cool for people to go look at? Do they tell them about something cool? Do they have energy? Do they have enthusiasm? Are they you know, relatively upbeat? We're, you know, we're not, you know, you can be real, but read those emails with a reader's eye, with a subscriber's eye, and ask yourself, is this a list that I would have stuck around for? Is there some value being delivered here? Even if that value is just fun, a story, a laugh, a cool link, a gif, a gif? I guess they're <laughs> gifs. Um, look through them. I think you'll probably find that there's a problem because otherwise they wouldn't be unsubscribing you know, in masses. Um, if you were able to get them on, you were intriguing enough for that. So figure out what you're not doing in the emails and give this content stuff a try. Okay, Particularly the story piece because people just love a story. Thank you. You're welcome. Hi, thank you for this. Um, I've been keeping my emails rather short for the last year and working my way up to bi-weekly emails, but I've been considering um, doing one longer form email per month, mm -hmm. um, maybe an interview with another author, like five questions. Do you have any suggestions or ideas on those longer form emails? I think you... that's great. Okay. Um, a good resource is um, email, t no, mailtester.com. That's got a dash in it, yeah. a hyphen. Mail-tester.com. Mail um, send a longer email there just to check that it's not too long. They call it wait. Um, but ch one of the things that that will check among a bunch of other spam stuff is the weight of your email and the ratio of um, pictures to text and so forth. So make sure that whatever it is that you're doing isn't edging you over into not very deliverable territory. Um, I send pretty long emails because I have diarrhea of the mouth. Um, David Gogren sends super long emails. Anyone who's on his list will know. Um, you can absolutely get away with a long email. It's not a problem. But double check that you're not shooting yourself in the foot. As far as like the interview question, I would just say, generally speaking, stick pretty close to your genre. I mean, go out a little bit. Um, but if you like wrote science fiction, you're not going to interview romance authors, obviously. Um, so just kind of stick close to your genre. And that gives, again, it's the recommendation thing. That's somebody that they go, oh, well, that person seems interesting. I'm going to pick up their book. And I think that's fantastic. I think it's a great idea. Great. Thank you. Hey. Hi. I feel a little bit like a middle schooler who's going to ask the English teacher how long her paper should be. Um, <laughs> but I know I'm takes. not the only one in this room with this question. What is the optimal number of emails to send per month? Or like the op optimal time between, is one a week like good? Should we be doing two a week? I would love it if you guys sent one a week. Okay. I think that's a good number. There is a number of super fans that would be happy if you sent them two. It might be a little much for some people. I feel like one is a really good number and it gives them something to, like, it comes on Friday. It comes and then they have something to, like, look forward to. And they know to look for it if it winds in promotions. 
which is totally going to sometimes. So um, I would love to see you all send weekly, but that gives everybody hives when I say it. <laughs> I want you to send monthly. You cannot send less than monthly for technological reasons that are outside the scope of this talk, but you can come to some other talk sometime and I'll go on about it at length, because I love to. You need to send at least monthly or your reputation will suffer very badly. So if you release every six months, get some content ideas. <laughs> you gotta send at least that often. But I'd love to see people send weekly. I think that's very, very engaging. The more often you send, the better your engagement is gonna be. And anybody who doesn't wanna get an email every week can leave. Or if you really wanna get fancy with your you know, situation, you can say, do you only wanna hear from me once a month? And there's a group that just gets the first email. You can do all kinds of cool stuff. Um, or you can make a release only list or whatever you wanna do if you wanna do that. But um, if you send once a week, I find that the engagement is way higher across the list that I manage. The one week people are doing better. Awesome, thank you. All right, I, I have not quite two minutes, but if someone doesn't get up here, we can talk outside. Hi, Tammy. Hi. I love you. Thank you. Um, so, <laughs> feel good. so I, um, what, what do you recommend to somebody, me, um, <laughs> who had a very uh, great engaging list and then life happened? and it's been a very long time since I've emailed them. Do you suggest mentioning my absence or just folding right back into it? You're probably gonna have to mention it just because some people will have noticed, but what you don't wanna do, I always shorthand with don't be weird. What you don't wanna do is show up and do a whole song and dance and be like, sorry guys, I was gone, I bet you missed me because they're gonna be like, I didn't notice. I feel weird about that, should I have noticed? Do I not like her? Um, you want to show up and say, oh, sorry, long time no see. I sent an email this morning that said exactly that. Uh, I'm sorry, I haven't talked to you in a while. Things got crazy. Here's what's going to be happening coming up. Really good idea if you've ghosted them in that way to give them something super clicky. Super, 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 super clicky. I don't know what that is, but you probably do. Something that they will not be able to resist. A freebie, uh, I don't know, if you're in romance, send them a picture of Henry Cavill. If you write fantasy, send him a picture of Henry Cavill. I don't know, whatever. That always works. He's very handsome. I don't know if you've noticed. Um, send them something crazy, crazy clicky that they have to actually click through to see or deal with. A poll is good. What do you want to see going forward? Something to kind of reintroduce yourself. Also, super ninja tip. At the top, I want you to say something like, have you forgotten who I am? <laughs> Which is a very humbling thing to have to write in an email. Click here to see my book catalog and I bet you'll remember. People who look at your email and go, I have no idea who this is, might mark you as spam. So I got the, I'm getting the Thank iPad. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. You guys, if you want to chat with, we won't be on mic, but if you want to chat with me, I'm not going anywhere. Bye, everybody. Thank you for coming.